Hey friends, so we're back with the next episode of playing Shrith, the fantasy text RPG. Uh, I got me an uh, energy drink. In excess, as we call it. Um, and so I didn't want to do these special packages without uh, you checking out and being able to see. Um, there's probably a lot of reading that I don't want to do, but I'll try. So let's go ahead. I knew this special package is to be claimed. Adventure Survival Pack Platinum. Claim this special package. Congratulations, you. So we get 500 adventure tokens, the Ring of Heroism, and the Amulet of Protection. 16. Uh, K. General experience, 8K, and 50,000 coins up melee. So it's pretty much that sort of things. Um, so it's pretty generic like that, but so we'll just go through them. Uh, now we got gold. It's a little bit less. Oh, the same thing. And we got um, silver. It's a little bit of the same thing, a little bit less. This is just going to help all my stats from the start of the game. Uh, we got copper. Uh, you know, more the same. A little less because it's on the left side of it. Um, then we got Grapthor's Horn. Congratulations. <laughs> For the better part of two hours, you stood outside the doors of the Stoneback Tavern, your eyes scouring Hocklaw's main thoroughfare in both directions, eager for any sign of the man you've come here to meet. Having not yet met this man in person, you've thus far only communicated with him. Those notes left with the Stonebacks trustworthy innkeeper Purple. You're not even sure who it is you should be looking for a sudden tap on your left shoulder gives you a start and you turn to find a tall thin white hand man garbed in a red tunic and thick cloth breeches a uh, heavy grey cloak is draped over his narrow bony shoulders i hope i didn't startle you he said bowing quickly i don't often move about so openly perhaps we can find somewhere a bit more suitable for business at hand in a small overgrown garden behind the tavern, you speak at length with a stranger whose sudden appearance, in spite of his determined vigil, has left you in a vague unsettling, with a vague unsettled feeling. This, he says, producing an ornately engraved wooden box, is what I've come here to bring you. Are you familiar with Garapathor? No. His legend, his exploits? I will wager that you are, since you requested his horn. It is not a requirement of mine, for you, you will this day take possession of his horn. We are indeed quite worthy of it. After all, I hardly... Uh, have come all this way if, if you were not intrigued by what he just said you asked the man who is not revealed his name if there's anything regarding either Garapathor or the horn that you should know Gorap, Gorap, Garapathor let's read a little bit about Garapathor on all the adventures whose of all the adventurers whose deeds have been gone down in legend there are few worthy of mention than Garapathor possessing what he says the legend says was superhuman strength and agility the Tassian warrior and adventure quickly made a name for himself yeah, battling goblins ogres trolls dragons and all manner of beasts that prowled the untamed edges of the kingdom and it said that grow thor with the help of powerful magically really ally was able to travel into the neverness and frequently did so in those reminded artifacts which he brought back with him to strith during one of his many excursions into the dark realm deep in the heart of neverness Gorath crossed paths with the Demon Queen. Her name was never known to, to the adventurer. According to the legend, Gorath killed the Demon Queen and took one of his three horns protruding from her head. This horn, the horn of the Nameless Queen of that infernal realm, became known as Gorathor's horn. Gorath treasured the horn and never allowed it to leave his sight. With his passing over the horn to spirit, leaving many believe that it's lost forever. So that's what we're getting here. So weed. The old man pauses and seems to give your question a great deal of consideration before slowly shaking his head. You need only know that Goathor was the greatest adventurer of his age, and perhaps of any other age known to us. His legacy is far greater than those of the many adventurers whose names grace the pages of our most beloved legends. But as important as it may be, it does not readily concern us, or more to the point you. You've requested his horn, you're worthy of it, you shall have it. I'm looking around, apparently making certain the two of you weren't being observed. The man opens a wooden box, he's holding and reaches inside. After rummaging for several seconds, he draws a long carved horn out of the engraved box and hands you the curious object. <clears throat> you carefully study the horn, intricate, intricate, intricate carvings adorning its yellowed sides, depicting a fearsome winged being flying from the sea of fire. The horn of the demon queen, he says, his voice adopting an eerie monotone as he reveals you the item's origin. The power of that ancient beast yet resides in 
that which you now hold one of the three horns go up for but god this horn is lacking for that long is remains in your possession so too must you why as you examine the horn a strange sense of despair begins to swell in the pit of your being slowly you feel the anguish deep in, in it, accompanied by a cavalcade of nightmarish visions that pass through your thoughts each imagine seeing more serving than one to proceed it and a sudden jolt calls by a hand holding your shoulder immediately request returns you to the present the old man with a smith the mysterious curry who had just given me the horn moves his hand asks if you are right the corn is capable of producing very black melancholy you mustn't fear it though neither need you welcome it willingly you must remember the origins of the horn and what it was it will always be it has no real power over you though at times you may find yourself almost certain that it does okay this seems dangerous <laughs> but i got plus five melee plus ten stamina and 16k general 4k of all and look, it can be sold in Tipithic uh, parkour for 100 Grimshaw coins. Now possess whatever measure of power the horn has chosen to bestow. You would be most wise to dispose of the source as quickly as can. You decide to keep it, you must protect it. Now, however, that we gotta remember that we gotta go to Timakith. Someone willing to take it, there's no way in this world to save to get rid of it. Simply discarding it would be disastrous. <laughs> you may ask me no more about this any of this if you just as if he anticipated several questions you were about to pose him i know the less that i can tell you save that you are now in possession of something few have ever had the privilege to know i do not speak of the horn but rather which it is my husband you i will now go with that the old man whose name you still do not know bows turns and strides out the courtyard he reaches the edge of the village there of pharaoh and turns to the right swiftly uh disappearing around the corner of the tavern or well, sometime, even with the steady, steady drizzle slowly soaking through your attire, you remain in the overgrown courtyard behind the tavern, content to con contemplate the enormity of the exposition you just made. At last, mindful of countless maladies to which your soggy state may improve, and by the you make your way back to the front of stone back there, you run into Purifor. The tavern keeper fixes you with his price looking quickly as you inside. You catch your breath out, catch your death out there on a day like this. He skulls directly into the table near you. You just sit there, and I'll fetch something to chase off the chill. No arguments, now sit. And so it is that you spend the rest of the rainy afternoon basket in the warm glow of sunbats, crackling fire, enjoying the generous hospitality and cheerful conversation of the tavern's affable host. Don't forget. How about we just copy this so I don't forget? Because <laughs> who is going to remember that? It probably goes somewhere. Alright, there we go. So, the next one up is uh, onyx survival package gives me 100 tokens gives me the rings and the amulet i think that's the best one actually yeah this is the best one it gives you 100,000 gold bitch i'm rich the permanent stat bonuses which i like all right next one up so pretty much um let's see these i like to say i would put on this one. So it brings down body and spirit and stuff. So apparently you can only wear one of this, of the amulet around your neck. So best to see what each one does. This gives me 13 stamina and 6 luck. This gives me body, mind, spirit, and melee and stamina. Uh, so this is obviously the best one out of these but I would prefer the dragon claw um, and get and get the stats up on my attributes instead of melee and as the amulet does so this just gives me and six luck so I'm already at 18 luck so I don't need that so nothing is gonna go good for me with the amulets but I think you can wear four or five rings so we'll start with the ring heroism gives me spirit um, stamina neville and um, melee so we definitely want to put that on pretty much all this did the same thing except of a lesser bit so now we're 20 spirit and we got more SP 
Imar and Neville points. So what else we got? Uh, we got the horn. So that's about it. Okay, I keep going. Box of Whispers bundle. I've got 400 adventure tokens and the Box of Whispers. And then what comes out of the Box of Whispers? <laughs> one stamina yeah I'm good with that and we get gold and we get experience <laughs> and we get adventure tokens what else um, ring and we get the whispering ring which gives me melee summon more Never all. Um, that's it. Okay, cool. So, since I can put on more than one ring, I will do that ring. And there we go. Alright, let's go back here and keep going. So now we get the mossy mirror bundle. This is quite a bit. So, this will probably be a longer episode. Mossy. The box is empty. It's not empty after all. Listen to me. What? What is it? Essence of Abarok. Abr Ab Arbrinok. To make use of this valve, can we explore Bitlet Woods? Okay, take the essence of my father. Go to Bitlet Wood and seek out the Mossy Mirror. You will know where to find it. You must do this. You must help me grant my father to sleep that has been so lit and suddenly something's like that in your hands. Okay, got the essence. So I gotta go to bit. So I will copy this <laughs> to do later. Oh, we're doing it now. <laughs> Increase my aura score. Sweet. And I get adventure tokens. And red moss caps. Which I don't know what those are for. More stuff that can be sold to Pak Ra. a long cape, this red mask. I spawn in one. Now there's a cape and a cap. Well, it's definitely better than what I have on right now. And then the cape. The cape gives me aura, stamina, and never. And then the cap gives me same. Uh, okay, the cap gives me stamina and more aura. So now my aura should be 20. <laughs> Indeed it is. And then I get more experience. I thought I was going to have to go there and accept another time, but apparently no, this is... So you can pause and read it if you like. I don't want to get out of too much out of order of the actual quest where I start in Hawk War. Uh, so then we're doing the glyphs here. A warm afternoon in late spring, the torn winged tavern in Trithic. The Scarface men now seated across from me at the back table of the tavern's bustling common room is Tulrit, a fellow adventurer who grieved through a mutual acquaintance to meet you here. As sizzling in his chair and rummaging through the worn leather pa pack resting in his lap, the renowned warrior who and his reputation acquiring all manners of ancient artifacts tells you that he's honored to finally meet you. Your achievements give the rest of us hope and something to strive towards, he says money. There are a few of us left who truly toil at the strange profession of ours, but there can be no doubt that you're the very peak of any success we adventures have achieved, but I dare say, see, this is out of context. 
You're not here to have me lodge you. I shouldn't delay things. This, let's get our business underway. I suppose we should get this bit out of the way first. These are from a mutual friend whose name we know better to speak openly. Now we're done. Well, that is time to get to the hardest matter. Torrit produces a small leather pouch which he removes a jagged piece of grey, dark grey stone. He places the stone on the table and slides it over to you. The shot of rock needs you as scratch hand, a simple etch on the surface, outline of griffin, a piece of mint, that's the blue go. Close your fingers around it and whatever you do, don't let go, not until it's over. Hold tightly. Okay. The blue go for the stone spilling out through your clenched fingers, a vivid blue hue scene begins to form, take form in your mind, a mighty griffin. Push an outcropping of rock overlooking the sprawling valley that separates the base of two towering peaks. Watches the horizon as day slowly gives way to dusk, and as the scene begins to finish, strange sensations wash it over. You toward as if sitting. This reminds you to retain grip. Hold on tight, don't let go of it. In the power, you indeed are weak. Who are fortunate enough to share with this great moment. Okay, Inam Naramod, a deific figure worshipped through, throughout the early ages, is long believed that Inamorad, also known as Inamorad the Jess, was the principal avatar of Shrithic. Shrithic the All Father. Okay, he's the god. Well, that's why that is named after Shrith. Shrith is named after Shrithic. Um, the worship of Inamorad has faded in the current age and is now seen by many as blasphemous. Some believe that Namorat was merely a very powerful mage whose legendary status grew out of his propensity to use his magic to help those in need. The scrolls of Namorat, dragon hide scrolls and dragon bone cases, which were long ago written by Namorat himself, are said to bestow grand potent effects on anyone fortunate enough to acquire and read one. Hey, I'll take it. <clears throat> by acquiring all three, you will receive an extra bonus. So, the same story pretty much will happen each time on these glyphs so we'll get all of them yep it's the same text so we're not going to read it again and then we got the other one which is the bear the bonus because we have all of them okay keep going so we get so we get some more survival pack oh this is number five we've already read that so we're not gonna read it again <coughs> we get fury pack crimson wonder pack <laughs> Gems of Ulfram and then well, let's go with this one One late winter evening the hobnail in north and east of Tolinus you recognize Ferendrin immediately shaking the dust of the snow from your tire you close this heavy slab door shutting out most of the biting chill making your way across the inn's empty firelit main room to where the heavy set fire clad man sits alone at the table as you draw up to him the man looks up and smiles motioning for you to take the seat next to him stroking his unkempt grizzled beard he says you thoughtfully for several moments a bit late in the season for this bitter spell he says his gravelly voice perfectly suited for his appearance i doubt you have much trouble though is that right no trouble for you no i wouldn't expect that you, you did you are quite a bit alike you and i are quite a bit alike you know not all, in all ways obviously but in the ways that matter. Glance around the room and confirm that you and the legendary huntsman are its sole occupants. Even the keepers left us even the keepers left us for in the next little bit, said Ferendrid, smiling. He doesn't mind indulging one of my requests now and again. We best not dally though, shall we get down to it? Over the course of the next hour, Ferendrid presents you with all that you promise when you accept this invitation. Ferendrid's fury. It's a weapon. A bow. Oh, sweet. It's beyond epic. That's nice. Okay, it's a bow. I like that. It's an amulet for my neck. It does not occupy a neck armor slot. Sweet. That means I can put it on. And then more adventure token. 100,000 in gold. <laughs> Talk about starting the game with experience in gold. We got the easy epic out of the way. 
I'm going to miss old Fury, and no mistake, but this is how it must be. My time in the wilds is over, which is why I'm also imparting something I learned many years ago. Much of your son has been, even after he sits back in the chair, the sound of his whispering voice will continue to echo through your mind in gentle sigh, conjuring up vivid images of fantastical wild places and equally wild creatures who hold dominion over them. After several minutes, when the whisper had fade, has faded to silence, Ferendry smiles and nods. That has given me a, a long while ago, but this man, by a man no longer with us, it serves only a single worthy soul, and will never leave you even when darkness gathers and the world becomes a place both unbearable, cruel, and wantingly savage. The whisper of the wilds. I only hope you've come to know its secrets as well as I have. <whistles> Thank you, my friend. To know the fury will one again roam the wild, a place of the what world brings me more joy than anyone could ever know. And they're off. He does that like an early start, even in this bit of cold have At that, I'll get out the cobwebs and warm you down to your toes. Say, I wonder if I would be too much posing as how you are with the whole planks, hammers, and nails bits. What <laughs> is he talking about? Okay. That's cool. I, I need a bow, so that's good. Um, guarding spirit. Okay. What is this? It's a bone amulet. It's for my neck as well. Too much stuff for my neck. <laughs> okay, good. Doesn't have a story with it. Um, so this doesn't take up a neck slot, it says. So, wait. Okay. Roll the amulets of protection. Sweet. Look at that. We're at 69, 178, and 117. It's getting serious. Okay. So, let's do the Crimson Wonder Pack. Another story. Palesmouth Western. Size and deposit your feet in a large sack. It's outside Huckler. Yeah. He's been cradling the aging grey haired adventurer, better known by his somewhat infamous moniker, Crimson Wonder. Tells you that the entirety of the bag's content is yours. All of it is for you, he says, shrugging. I won't pretend that it doesn't pay me to see it go, though neither will I pretend it's not at least some measure of relief. I can't recapture the days gone by, and I'm also ever wary of trying to. If what's in a bag will be of use to hands that will now prove more productive than mine, more productive by far. When you ask the retiring adventurer if he's certain, he pauses just a moment as if giving careful consideration to your query within Sully Nards. More than certain, if that's possible. Go and take it. Open it up. I hope you find what's in it to be to your liking. So, what I'm taking from these special gifts is that I'm when I decided to become an adventurer, Shrithic, you know, the old father, decided, hey, we want to make sure Allison has the easiest time helping people in adventuring. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's with me. No, I like the name of it. Okay. What is it? Okay, more adventure tokens. 2500 and gold. 25,000 gold. Ring Kinsen Wonder. What does this ring do? Body, mind, and spirit. Now that's worth something. And this is a glowing pendant. Gives me body, mind, and spirit as well. Body, mind, and spirit. Which is what I need. I need body, mind. I don't need spirit. What? Uh, pendant is another area. Put the ring of Crimson Wonder on, too. Bro, look at these stats. We just need mind and luck to get to 20 on everything. Everything can be tr sold to Pakura for tokens. What else are you giving me? 50,000. Um, Government Dragon? You're always gonna pick Dragon. <laughs> I said never proved the Crimson Wonder. What are you giving me? You're not giving me anything for a dragon. Why'd you ask me? I should have read it, I know. So we got the Wing of Fury, and then we got the Gems of, of Orvalin. 
So let's just go with this. I'm not going to read it. See all three issues on. To reach the Oaken Seat, travel to Trithic. Okay, so you need to go to the Oaken Seat and put these in there. We will do that next episode. So we're going to get all this stuff from that. Good. So let's get all three now. So much experience. Now we gotta get all the powers and stuff. I guess that's gonna have to wait till next episode, huh? Yep. So we get all three of the etched stones to take over there. And then now what are we getting from the gems here? This ruby's the best, right? No, Sapphire's better than Ruby, right? In the private room at the back of Dragon Lord Tavern in Mergsville. A lot of stuff happens in Mergsville. The tall got man standing before you met you on the street just a few moments ago and probably ushered you to a small room in the back of the bustling tavern. He warily glanced out of the room. This is leaking. Why? is really out of the room at the rowdy throng of patrons before closing the door and turning to you and deeply bowing. The rabble needing and setting itself for that business, he says, doing nothing to disguise his disdain for the drunken mob. I'm honored to meet you, last Allison. Here, let me not delay. He puts a large wooden chest resting on the far corner of the room. It's not easy feat getting that in here unseen, but it's hardly young as hands hung up. What's in it is yours. Take what's in the chest. I regret that I cannot stay longer, but there will be certainly be danger. Of course, I wish you luck. Farewell. Oh, it's all. Sorry. What's the ring gonna do for me? Million stamina. Eh. I like stuff that gets my stats up. Besides million stamina, that's what weapons are for, <laughs> right? So we don't have to read any more of these. We'll just get that stuff. Okay, what's this ring got for me? See, it's less, so. As I said, Ruby's the best. Probably can sell this stuff to pack her. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's less. There's so many adventure tokens, too. Whew, 7,000! That's gonna get me good weapons, too. These are gonna be longer episodes since I have to read. I don't have to, but I'm going to read. And so that's okay. And then the final one here is the garnet. The same guy. Alright. I got an extra bonus for having all gems. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. So I think that's everything. I don't have any spirit bonus here. And then the other thing you can do is trade in um, adventure tokens. So I got the bow that I want already. We can get better of all this stuff. There's Proving Grounds 2 is here. And there's Donation Wars, we, which we did already. We got, got on Patreon. And this is previews of what's coming up. We're not going to do that yet. Alright, I'm going to exit. We automatically get rested. 
no rest. So yeah, good. See, and now it's telling me to get the quick stone. So I gotta go to Rixpin and Trithic to get that. Okay, I definitely want to power learn all skills. So I do want to go to Trithic for that. one beefing up, they call it. So I've done the one list building stuff. I do want to go to um, my guy, the outfitter. Eazen's shop is small and cluttered with all manner of gear that an adventurer or prospective adventurer might find useful. Wooden shelves line the walls of his room, above which protrude the heads of several goblins, a pair of ogres, and a forest troll. Grim trophies from is in his younger, more adventurous, adventurous sometimes. Oh well, today is certainly the lucky one for you, said Izin, as he walks out of a small room at the back of the shop. What do you say your name is? Allison, is it? Well, Allison, I've just a thing for you. Follow me and I'll show it to you. You follow the one-eyed Izin to the back of the shop and step into a small room, even more cluttered than the main shop floor. Izin apologized for the mess strewn from wall to wall and busies himself with gathering up several things from different piles located throughout the room. Just give me a minute. He says, I, I didn't expect him quite this early. And then we get all this stuff. After several minutes, Izzin returns to the doorway where you've decided to stay put and presents you with a large collection of gear he's gathered out of clutter that chokes the small room. There, have at it for what what any of it's worth, he said, depositing a lot. Also, I, I wash my hands of all this and I close at the shop at the day's end. There aren't any more real adventures. And this part was so quite exceedingly, of course, and may few many years will be better spent in the cottage than in my cottage in the cottage than in Dursley. The miss is already there, mind you, and won't come back here. She's quite right. I'm too over this game. They have it all. It isn't tells you to take whatever you'd like. I mean, might as well take it. I can sell it even though I got um I'm rich. <laughs> so I don't need any of it. But hey. I only wish you luck, said Izzin, after you thank him for his generosity and prepared to set off anyway. Life of an adventure is not to be in being not these days. It's not like days gone by when it was thing glory to return you home with three garment heads strapped to your back. Most these days, I'm content to sit by the fire, sipping pale ale, forgetting that it takes fierce steel and hardened hands to hold back the tides of the wild. I wish you well, my friend. You thank Izzin and again, and wish him luck in dancing before turning it and making your way out of his shop. Palo! It's a common popular hot drink throughout North Broadland. It's derived from the bark of a paleo tree, a mid-sized dark skin, hot where the bark is boiled in water and resulted drink is dark, bold and energizing. The paleo tree renews its bark annually. The bark is also a food that is prized for horn tails. If you can imagine the flavor of strong black coffee with a hint of roasted nuts, you'll have to capture the essence of paleo. So it's like coffee. <laughs> Alright, there we go. So yes. We start in Hocklaw, we've done the blue building, um, we've gone to the Outfitter, I don't need to go to the caves, and then the next thing we're going to follow a boy to Dern Sing, so we're going to um, travel um, to Dern Sing, uh, and in Dern Sing, we want to. Hey, you can visit easy. <laughs> yeah, visit Izzy again. As in small cottage sits on the edge of a reedy pond a mile or so from the center of Dursing. Here and his wife, Gisela. I've said the gun to spend their elder years in quiet comfort. A friendly couple come out to meet you as you approach it as you see that humble pleasant abode. Gisela serves you up a steamy pot full of porridge while Eazin fetches you a mug of pale ale, fresh from the pot dangling over the fire. You talk a link to Eazin and Gisela, telling them all about your latest adventures and listening something feigning interesting. Sometimes feigning interest as you, they relate to you many of the recent happenings in and around dancing. Here we are, Patrick on it's really set my mind. I have something for you, Alison. I've been saving you all this time and I've just about forgotten all about it. Goblin Doom? What is Goblin Doom? 
It's five plus extra gets cover. It gives me agility, body, and might. Agility, body, and might. Oh, I don't need those things. Um, but I, w I would say it's the best weapon I have so far. Besides Fiend's Fury, but you don't equip that, it's automatically on you. And then what's the adventurous ring? Gives me luck. Do I need luck? I could use some luck. <sighs> the sword appears to have a remarkable weapon. Strange symbols adorn its hilt and edge along the entire length of this blade. There's a scene depicting the battle between humans and goblins. I've always called that ring the adventurous ring. I never found out what a true name was, although the other one I gave it is as good as any. The sword is named Goblin Doom and it was given to me and an old friend of mine many years ago. Tally was his name. He came into a bit more family wealth than I did, though there was a time when he and I shared many great adventures together. Those, my friend, are certainly days I will remember. He doesn't tell you that both the ring and the sword are yours to have. I can't keep holding on to it all forever. It's time if they pass to a new generation of adventures again. I hope you stay serving you well, Alison. So, there you go. Make no mention of it. They'll at least serve you p their purpose with you, Alison. Take care of yourself out there. So, there we have it. <coughs> Alright. And then, there's gonna be value it. Isn't it? And blah blah blah. It's a location of Tarkhold Crypt. Lord Tarkhold, the cruel and some say maniacal Lord Tarkhold ruled over the southwest portion of Tisa as a vassal of the king nearly 500 years ago. His reign over the people of southwest Tisa was a tyrannical one, and the list of wicked deeds is indeed long one. When he died, it is said that his supporters buried him in a secret tomb so that his remains would never be disturbed. Okay. Okay. Interesting information. Uh. He returns from him bearing a weighty leather covered tome. He opens a large book and shows you the cruelly sketched map of the countryside surrounding Dursing and stamina is finger at a spot almost five miles east of the village. You're quite familiar with the legend of Lord Tarkhall. Now we are. <laughs> a brutal tyrant who many centuries ago ruled over the people of Tisa. When he died, he said his supporters buried him in a secret tomb so that his remains would never be disturbed. I found the entrance too many years ago, but of course I never dared to venture into it. I'm one of the disturbing the dead. I'm not one for disturbing the dead as a rest, but old Tarkhold isn't worth any such consideration. Now, let me tell you how to get to the crypt from here. Listen intently as he explains to you the direct route to the crypt from his cottage, and when he's finished, you're certain that you now find your way there with little difficulty. Thank you. But that information is in. Okay, so we've got that information. Um, I'm gonna go to the market. We can sell some stuff here, such as these daggers and short sword. It's not worth it having. Okay, scroll, spear, added shirt. I'm gonna get like a much more amazing. <laughs> I'm definitely not selling these things to him. Um, but we can sell the leather greaves. Oh, we need to put the belt on. And the gloves. Okay, sleeves. Okay, that'll be better. And greaves. That's not gonna be better than my cut a cap, that's for sure. Alright. Because we're going to sell this stuff, for sure. Did we pass by some stuff? Now we're good. Um, padded greaves, padded sleeves, leather helm, for sure. None of this, because he can't pay me what it's worth. I'm going to sell the checked items. I didn't buy you. Yeah, whatever. Um, let's go back to my items. Put this on. Two forty one. It's like one. Alright. And you can 
just sell this. Just sell it. Alright, and then we want to go back. We want to buy the large backpack. Of course, we want a lantern. We want a rope. We want the large black pack. Hey, and the last one up. Okay. Good. So we bought that. Do we have to equip the backpack? No. Give me plus 20 carry weight, which is a good thing. Alright. Go back. And then we talk about getting a small dolly. Just buy it. It's 50. Well done! To teach cheerfully as he hands you over the deed to the property. Get the 50 gold tokens and show you this one. Yeah, and now I live in Dursing, you guys. <gasps> and I can drop stuff here. So what I want to drop is all this stuff until I figure out where to um, sell it. Because I do not need to hold it all. Well, I might need to get that ring. This is better than what I have on. I know I have to drop stuff once at a time. Uh, okay. One day I'll figure out what is all this stuff. I have room for another ring. I think these are the best options I have right now. Okay, good, one more. What is this do? Alright, this is trash. We can only drop stuff here, we can't drop money anymore. So, it's been 40 minutes, so I'm going to stop the episode there, and we're going to continue um, getting um, equipped and getting the pre-game stuff here next episode, okay? Thank you so much for joining me. You know what I'm going to say. Peace. Mm.